Hi, and welcome back to today's video, which is all about how to write an abstract for a call for papers, as I discussed and promised in my last video. So the last video, I spoke about conference presentations and why it's important to get into as many as possible um, as, your, as an early career academic. Um, but today I'm focusing more on basically how to write an abstract. So usually what happens is you will see a call for papers um, and in the call for papers, they just basically say, you know, um, if you want to present or if you have anything, um, any work that you've done or whatever, um, come and present for us. And obviously you need to, you need to um, submit an abstract of what it is that you want to present. They go through it, they select it, and then they um, invite you basically to, to present. So um, the reason why I'm doing this really is because the first time I had to do it, I really couldn't find like everything in one place. Um, so I hope that this video will do that. I do have a blog post, which I've written. I have it here um, and I've like written the points in more detail. So if you wanna go over this um, and just, you know, read it in more detail, um, head over to my blog. The link is in the description box. It's blog.nafisalondon.co.uk, but um, you can access it in my um, you can access it in the description bar. So I do have the five points here, and basically that's what I'm going to be covering today. Um, so the first thing, the very first thing, um, is obviously you know um, it seems really straightforward, and I I mean this in no patronising way. Um, but the first thing you really need to do is just basically read the call for papers, read it in detail. So um, that it usually is in on a website, or it could be emailed to you. Um, it may come, you know, whatever. But there is it may be in a PDF or on a website, whatever. But there is something called a call to papers, and that's basically where the instructions are. It tells you about the conference, tells you about what they're looking for, it tells you the um, guidelines. And even though it's obvious, that's a starting point to basically read it. Um, a lot of people just think, oh, okay, yeah, I get it. And then they just go straight to submitting. And um, it's really wrong because there are guidelines which you really need to stick to. Um, they, they are very strict actually. Um, obviously conferences vary in terms of the prestige. Um, the more prestigious they are, the more like internationally renowned they are, the pickier they are, and you really need to stick to the guidelines. Um, so always a starting point, read the call for papers. And it's not just about guidelines, it's basically the call for papers, which, you know, sets out everything about the conference and what they're looking for, will tell you whether your work um, is a fit for that conference and vice versa, because it's also about whether the conference is the right fit for you, um, both your work and both yourself as um, the academic and the um, researcher that you are. Um, so it's really worth reading through it because you'll get a feel. First, you'll see what it is exactly, what the focus is, and then you'll see if it's, some, if it's something or some way you want to present, because um, you need to be picky as well. You need to be picky where you are going to present your work. And I know um, there is this kind of, you know, power distance where it's all about you lobbying to get your work seen, but also you can actually be just as selective. Um, it's not everywhere that you want um, to be seen, and it's not every conference that is a fit for you or for your work. Um, I have definitely um, read Call for Papers where I think I'm not about this. Um, it just doesn't fit my vibe. Um, sometimes they're asking for too much and um, it's a bit unreasonable and I just don't feel it. So I don't apply. Um, and then others are just like, this is perfect. Um, and the latter, I've come across so many Call for Papers where I'm just like, this is perfect. Um, and most of the time, um, the timing the dates and everything is fine and it works and you know for me luckily every single um, conference that I've submitted my abstract for I've been successful in having my work present um, accepted to for me to present um, so that's a good thing but that's only because I literally carefully chose them um, I chose what I felt was a fit for me and my work um, so definitely that's a starting point. So, you know, overall, it's all about just basically the guidelines, um, knowing what to submit, how to submit it. And of course, just to feel 
is the conference for you? Does their vibe fit with your vibe? Um, because it's not always the case. And you can be choosy um, because they are choosy and selective. And, you know, I think it should work both ways. Um, the second thing is that when you read the call for papers, you will see obviously in the guidelines, there are different strands. Sometimes there are different strands, like they will have like um, an overall conference um, title and a theme. And then they may have like sub themes or sub strands um, on different things. Um, within the there's you know the general umbrella there are different strands um, so for example um, it could be that it's um, if it's a you know conference on academic writing they could have a strand for um, business they could have a strand for stem they could have a strand for um, humanities it's possible and usually um, you submit to the strand or the theme that you feel your work is the best fit for However, if you feel that, you know, um, none of the strands fit, usually they do have a kind of other um, category where it's still something that is still relevant to the um, general theme of the conference and they will accept it. Sometimes they don't always have the theme. And I have presented once where the conference was about um, academic writing for STEM. Um, but my, my presentation was on critical thinking in teaching academic English, um, specifically writing. So, you know, I thought, okay, I'm not specifically talking about STEM, but it is something that, you know, the, the academic writing element is there. I contacted um, the, I emailed the conference um, uh, organizers and I said, you know, can I still submit? And they said, yes, because your work is still about academic writing we um, welcome it because we still accommodate um, top topics on academic reading and writing. So it's worth looking at the strands. Um, if they don't fit yours, see if there's an other strand. And if you still feel that your work still fits within the general, you know, umbrella theme, um, contact them um, if, if they don't have an other theme. Okay, the second thing is to choose your title carefully, okay? Um, now, this is a little bit tricky. It can be tricky. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes, you know, people are very good at titles and sometimes, you know, it takes a little bit of deliberation. Um, and basically, the importance of this is firstly, obviously, a title, you know, the catchier it is, the more interesting and enticing it is, the more likely it is to, you know, get accepted in terms of, you know, um, lead the the person on to read the abstract in detail and think, yes, you know, we've got something really good here. The second thing is when um, your abstract gets accepted, you obviously they, um, they print the people presenting and the titles of presentations on the program for the conference. Sometimes they have simultaneous presentations going on. So you'll see people need to pick which presentation to go to. And quite often, um, they can either pick basically just randomly, um, they can pick based on whether they know you, um, but of course you hope that they will pick based on your work. And I would, I like to believe in most cases they pick which conference to go to, which um, presentation to go to within the conference based on the title. If you have an interesting title that's enticing, um, that you know makes the people think, oh this is interesting, I want to know what's going to be said about this or this sounds useful to me um, there's something I could learn from this um, it works both for the abstract obviously getting accepted and then it works for you when you go to present and um, if you have to uh, if people have to pick which conference which um, presentation to attend within the conference then um, you know people will be geared towards yours it is something that you may want to leave to the end but sometimes um, you might be presenting from a paper that you've already written and, you know, titled, and it's absolutely fine for you to either go with that title or you might want to modify it slightly, um, add something, remove something, it's fine. But just make your title interesting. Um, don't make it sound like an essay title. Don't make it sound like an assignment. Really put your own twist on something. Um, and a good tip is to have a look at, you know, previous conferences, um, where people have, you know, used like kind of, you know, metaphors or um, engaging titles. So that's something to consider. 
Um, the third point is, you know, basically think, you know, have, it, it's a, it may be that you, you have a choice either to uh, present on something that you've already worked on, um, you've written and you've published perhaps, or you might read the call for papers and think, actually, there's something, you know, I have an idea, I have something I want to talk and discuss, and then you might want to create your presentation entirely from scratch. Either is fine. OK, it's absolutely fine. You might um, be working on your thesis. It might be a working paper. So it may be something that you, you haven't finished, you're working on. And that's why we call it a working paper. And you might think, you know, um, actually, there's something interesting here within what I'm working on, what I'm writing, what I'm researching. Um, and I would like to present on this. That is absolutely fine. Um, or you might actually have the work done and you might think I've written this I want to present my paper I want to present my research that is fine the important thing is um if you have done the paper and you have you know um you, you've your work is already there then it's slightly easier to extract the information that you need to uh, put forth in your abstract otherwise if you are um preparing your presentation from scratch that's also fine um what it just means is you need to think carefully um, of basically what it is you're going to present and how you you're going to present those ideas because obviously your um, abstract needs to show the potential that your presentation has so it's fine if you want to present on something that you've not written about or you've not actually you know done it's fine um, like I said a lot of um, presentations are on papers that are works in progress because you know you're working on it um, I myself one of my presentations um, is an, something that is from my thesis that I haven't obviously finished, um, but it's something that, you know, is, is a piece of it that I want to explore and discuss in a presentation. The fourth thing, very important thing, is to check and stick to the word limit. This is very important. Um, don't treat it as an assignment where you have, you know, your five to 10% leeway, because um, first of all, you want to, the, the reason why guidelines are there is because um, they have, you know, numerous submissions. They have, you know, um, they don't accept, obviously, obviously they don't accept every single submission that comes. They have to um, go through them and they need to filter. So if you're not sticking to the guidelines, usually what happens is they will just, um, toss your abstract to the side and they probably will never look at it um, so if you if the abstract is asking for 500 words make sure you stick to the 500 words don't even go over don't do something like 501 503 I know it sounds like you know oh you know it's not important it kind of is because it's the first thing they will notice if they're just you know sifting through a sea of um, submissions and, you know, they're like, OK, this person didn't stick to the um, guidelines. It's something that is like seems like a nitty gritty thing, um, but it's possible that they can nitpick. So it's just not worth it. If it's 500, stick to the 500. Sometimes you can submit in a website and the website often has um, the fields that are um, won't let you go over the character or word count. Um, in this case, don't write whatever it is in the field. Do it in a word processor or an editor um, to draft it first. Obviously, your word processor will give you the um, exact word count um, and you can play around with that, um, but keep it under the word count. So do it 500 or less if that's what they're asking for. Now, the um, interesting thing is um, you for me I always include references this isn't mandatory this is convention but it's not mandatory and the references I do include them in the word count um, it's worth checking you can always check the information if you're unsure you can always check um, email the conference organizers and just say um, I would like to submit my abstract could you please clarify is this um, necessary should I do this um, would you like this um, and you know whatever okay um, because also that helps if you do inquire um, quite often the people who are organizing your name will stand out and they'll they'll see kind of you know that you made a conscious effort you know you're enthusiastic about this because you reached out and that's what happened to me I reached out um, 
to a specific conference and the person, the chair of the um, conference was actually the person who um, was um, going back and forth with me in the email. And when I went to present, um, I stood out obviously because he'd you know, communicated with me and we had a really good relationship over the conference. Um, and it was just something that was it worked really well. So don't be afraid to reach out if, um, like I said, references, they're not mandatory. However, it is convention and it just shows that you are working on your, you, you, you're working with literature that you're familiar with and that's why you referenced it. So you don't have to do the reference, but I would highly advise you to. And if you do, um, stick it within the word count, but you can actually check, um, if, especially if you ask it, because you get two um, kind of ways to submit. One is on the website in the um, fields, which the fields are very specific and they do um, make clear what they, um, how you know many characters they allow, or you can do it in a document, either a Word document or whatever, and attach it and submit via email. If it's the latter, you have a bit more leeway, um, but you should still stick to it and just you know check that. Um, and finally, the most important, I think, um, very, very important here, get to the point, okay, get to the point, um, you know, there is a tendency to kind of waffle on, um, you know, trying to sound impressive and trying to, you know, come across um, as something that perhaps you're not, which is okay, you know, people, you know, it, it, the intention is good, but what you need to be mindful of is get to the point Again, the point of the abstract is to showcase that your presentation has the potential, you know, something that they want, something that is useful um, and will add value to the, the conference. So um, the first thing you should do is make your title really clear. Um, obviously, there is a template and um, that you can use, and I will um, share that um, possibly in my community. Um, on Patreon because it's um it's my own work and obviously I don't want it just like circulating um freely on the internet so it will be on um my academic community again the link is below I'll put examples of my own abstract submissions with the templates um that I used where if I'm doing it in a word document I'll put the title um the presenter name and everything all the details but even if, even when you do that, and even if you do it in the website field, in your abstract, still make your title clear, make it very clear. This is what you're going to present on. Um, say what exactly it is you are going to present on. Make it really clear. You need to obviously, you know, make it very easy for the people who are going through picking your abstract, why they should pick your abstract. Um, the third thing, say why it is important generally to the field that you are, you know, engaging in, um, in your own field. So for example, for me, education and social mm -hmm. justice, why is what I'm presenting important in that field? You know, um, it's very simple actually, just why, because if it isn't important, then you really wouldn't be presenting. So it's a lot simpler than you think, just get to the point. The third thing, um, be a bit more specific why it's important to that conference. Um, so specifically to that conference, what will it add? What value can you bring? Why basically should you present there? Why, sh why is it good for them to have you present your work there? Um, and then, yeah, the last thing, so those are four points. The last thing is then anything else that you think is important and relevant um, and a little bit interesting about what it is you're going to present. Now be creative here because you've put the important stuff and made it clear. So this is your chance to be a little bit creative and flexible and you can um, use that to your advantage. Um, and then that's it really. So that, those are the five points. Um, I would say there's also one more thing. Um, sometimes they do ask you for a biography about yourself um, and just make sure that when you do that, again, you you just mentioned things that are relevant um, in terms of about yourself. So make clear um, your role as the academic or the researcher that you are, um, your professional background that's relatable to this, um, your interests in research or the, the, you know, what exactly you're interested in um, and just make sure that what you present in your bio 
is something that's credible that makes you credible as a presenter that makes them think oh yes you know this person sounds an interesting person who engages in um what they want to talk about so therefore they're knowledgeable about it and you know somebody who we would like to have either on the panel or you know um on the you know discussion um so keep your bio relevant nothing about your pets or whatever uh, i know it's it might be fun um, but don't because the abstract it needs to be to the point um, later on when they refine it and you kind of want to be quirky and there is the opportunity for that that's fine but in your abstract submission um, where they do ask for a bio keep it brief keep it succinct to the point that gives you credibility as a presenter so that's it guys um the time now is two minutes past six i have a zoom conference um scheduled um for six o'clock actually and then i need to prepare iftar because it is ramadan um so that's it like i said there is a blog post that will accompany this um so you can click um blog.nafisa blog.nafisalondon.co.uk in the description bar and you can have um, a, a read and of course any questions I'll be more than happy to um, answer so feel free to leave your questions and comments um, and don't forget to give this video a like and share with anyone who you think will benefit from anything I've said in this video you'll see me in my next video inshallah assalamu alaikum <laughs>